What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Woo! Man, does it feel like you just got hit in the head with a sledgehammer? Well, if that is the case, you are not the only one. Uh, the Denver Nuggets are currently down 111 to 88. And, man, this has probably been one of the, you know, this is like, this is exactly where the Nuggets were after game four against the Clippers, definitely game three against the Utah Jazz, where, man, you look on the timeline, look on my Twitter, I mean, folks are just melting down. Uh, the Denver Nuggets are now down, I mean, shoot, 22 points to the Phoenix Suns, and, you know, last year they were down 30 points to the Utah Jazz after game three, and that put them down 2-1 on the series. This will put them down 2-0 on the series. I think one of the things that's most frustrating about, you know, so I said something on Twitter that it's hard. You know, people felt whatever way about it, but, you know, it's a lot of Fairweather fans on Twitter and stuff. So a lot of folks that are following me or whatever, a lot of folks have been new to the team or whatever, uh, you know, they're expressing their, their disappointment. But, like, you know, here's the thing, man. There's a difference between disappointment with me and then there's also the next thing where – it's like throw the whole team away, like throw the season away, like throw the series away next year or, man, they just don't want it. They're getting pumped. They saw. You see, that's the thing I, I, I've i always disliked about fandom and sports. Now, once again, you know, we family here. We just going to have a conversation. You know, you can feel how you feel. You know, that's why that's why we're doing this. You know, it's fun. But I, I think one of the things as a former athlete that's frustrating is like this is just a part of the process. This is a part of the process. This is part of the grind. Now, you know, I'm a lot of my takes, obviously, they're very pro-Nuggets, man, but I didn't start this channel, you know, to, to be open, like, up to every team and be like, you know, we're going to we're gonna be feeling good about everybody else. You know, when the Nuggets get beat, you know, we're just going to go ahead and say, man, that team just outright beat the Nuggets. I mean, yeah, sometimes we will. Like, they're just going to lose some games. A lot of times we talk like that this season. But, you know, I predicted the Nuggets going to win this series in seven. Because it was going to be a tough series. I knew it was going to be a tough series. And there was a possibility we could be down 2-0 or 1-3 again. But that's a part of the process. I think one of the things that frustrates me is just, man, it's like, you know, you can go be so high. Yoke won the MVP yesterday. And then the next day they're down by 20-plus points. And now they ain't worth they saw. You know, now the team needs to be blowing up. And again, y'all, this is, you know, based on the highlight of this video, I've said it before in the video that's the most popular on this channel about this ESPN hate Nikola Jokic, but Nikola Jokic is water, meaning he adjusts. He finds whatever the groove is. He finds whatever he needs to do to be successful, whatever he has to do for the team to win. That's what he does. That's how he plays. That's how he thinks. That's how he processes. The thing about water, though, is that water responds. Like, he sets the tone. Don't get me wrong. Jokic will come and set a tone. He'll score 24 in a quarter. 25 and a quarter, 21 and a quarter. But Yoki is a fueler. Like, everything he does is analytical. He processes everything. Like, the athletic article that came out today about Jokic's MVP, what Tim Connolly says, he's always 15 moves ahead. He always has 15 outs available to him. But Jamal Murray is the fire. The reason Jamal Murray is such a great clutch player, such a great closer, such a great playoff player, is because there is no moment that he is not willing to step up to the challenge. Now, that's down 3-1 to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That's down 14 points at half to Kawhi Leonard. That's down 15 points at half. That's down 21 against the, the Philadelphia 76ers in January 2020. They were down 21 points with five minutes left in the game, and they came back and won because Jamal just has that mentality. So tonight, and then in the previous game, here you got the Denver Nuggets, the, one of the best scoring teams ever. And they're not even going to push. They might push 100 points tonight. They pushed 105 points. And then they gave Phoenix Suns 121 points to the point where Jokic didn't play again in the, in the fourth quarter or at least half of the fourth quarter. So it's just there's so many things that are happening right now, and, and it's really caused Nuggets Nation quite a stir. You know, folks are feeling many different kinds of way about the game. You know, and then I have some trolls that are, that are on my that are on my Twitter feed and all that other stuff, and so you know that's that's definitely a, an interesting experience. Um, I think overall, y'all, I would be highly, highly, highly surprised if the Denver Nuggets don't come back and win Game Three and come back and win Game Four. I'd be highly surprised. But the reason is, it's not that 
they don't have – not that Phoenix isn't the better overall team. I mean, they are since the Nuggets are, are not healthy. But the Nuggets are going to have to respond or else they're going to get 4 2 or, or, or 4 one And that has not happened in the Nuggets era except when they were playing against Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James and AD when they were both healthy. Now, it's quite possible, though, that because of what's happening, because of the fact that Jamal Murray and Will Barton just came back today, because of the fact that they're still missing P.J. Dozier, it could be because of all that. It may not just be a possibility because they don't have the pieces to do it. They don't have the dog to do it. But I would be surprised, man. I at least think they're going to win game three. I think that the Phoenix Suns are an elite team. But again, y'all, that's the crazy thing about how Twitter works. Like, if you go back on my Twitter, I remember I was telling somebody that the Phoenix Suns were going to be a top seed in the West to start the year off because it's getting Chris Paul. A lot of people, again, based on what he did with the Thunder, people are like, oh, man, he might do something. I'm like, nah, Chris Paul going to fit in well with them. Gave him love. Like, I've been high on the Phoenix Suns all year, but, you know, now that because they're playing against the Nuggets and I took the position that the Nuggets are going to win in seven, now it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving enough credit to the Phoenix Suns. Like, no, they're a great team, but they're healthy. The thing with the Suns right now is that the Suns are healthy. They have been building camaraderie because they've been healthy all season, and they're also confident because they just beat the Lakers. And now they're playing against the Denver Nuggets without Jamal Murray, and it changes everything. So they're hitting shots. Tonight, the Phoenix Suns are 47% from three and 48% from the field and 88% from the line. But as opposed to the Nuggets, this is where we run into. The Nuggets shot 40% from the field, 36 to 90. They only got 90 shots up. They shot 33% from the three-point line. A lot of those were garbage time threes, 14 to 43. And then they shot 12 to 20 from the free throw line. So the Nuggets just aren't shooting well. They had 24 assists. Phoenix had 27 assists. They had, and the Nuggets had 11 offensive rebounds. Phoenix had eight. They had 46 rebounds in total. Phoenix has 52. So, y'all, I mean, at some point, they're going to have to buck up. Now, here's the problem, man. Facuno Campato has been awful. Monte Morris has been awful. Austin Rivers has been awful. Will Barton came in and gave you some key moments today. I mean, Will Barton had 10 points and 3 assists on 4, 8, and 2 of 5 today. He was only a minus 2. He played well. I mean, given the fact that he only played 16 minutes, he played really well. Nikola Jokic tonight only played 30 minutes. He had 24 points, 13 rebounds, 6 assists, 9 of 17 from the field, 1 of 3 from the three-point line, 5 of 6 from the free throw line. He did a minus 14. Michael Porter Jr. was not healthy tonight. He did not look good, would look stiff. He wasn't, he just, he didn't have it. 11 points, 6 rebounds, 3 of 13, 2 of 9. So Michael Porter Jr. is 15 and then comes back and has 11. Aaron Gordon was playing decent, but again, Aaron Gordon got caught up in the muck. Everybody started missing this stuff, so... I mean, the game didn't – it started off well, but then literally like, man, that second quarter, they just went cold. And it was 52-42 at half, and basically from there it was a wrap. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to process with this. And so, remember, y'all, the Denver Nuggets won the season series, but they won it with a healthy team. And then on top of that, every game they played was close. But both of the games they played so far have been blowouts. So, Again, I just think it's more of a confidence thing right now. Phoenix has every reason to be confident, and the Nuggets are just shell-shocked. Shell-shocked. I mean, I even think the fact that Jay Crowder is pulling off his best Marcus Morris and pressing, and then he's doing step-back three-pointers. And then tonight, CP3 has 17 points and 15 assists. But how do you get 15 assists? Well, that's because Devin Booker shoots 6 of 14, 3 of 7, 18 and 10. McCall Bridges, Mikhail Bridges has 5 of 12, 2 of 8. DeAndre Ayton, 15 and 10, 6 of 10. Jay Crowder, 11 and 5, 4 of 5, and 3 of 4. I mean, Cameron Johnson was 2 of 5 from 3. Dario was 2 of 3 from 3. Payne was 1 of 2, 3 from 3. Trey was 1 of 2, 3 from 3. Moore was 1 of 2 from 3. Frank Kaminsky was 1 of 1 from 3. So they were hitting threes. And then CP3 was just diamond. So that's the problem, man. You know, that's where the Nuggets are running into the biggest issue right now. Their guard play has just been terrible. Uh, Faku Campazzo has been an absolute liability because not only is he not, is he too small for CP3, as we talked about during the season when they played against each other, but he also has been terrible on offense. So if he's too small and he's also terrible on offense, it's a problem. Austin Rivers, again, Austin Rivers picked up off the street, starting in a playoff game, six points, starting two guard. So I expect Will Barton maybe to be entered into the starting lineup out of next game or game four uh, at some point. Uh, you expect way more from Monte Morris. Again, y'all, let's read these numbers, man. So Jokic was 9-17. Faku was 1-7. of 
Porter was 3 of 13. Rivers was 2 of 5. Aaron Gordon was 3 of 7. Shabako Green was 2 of 5. Monte Morris, 1 of 7. Will Barton, 4 of 8. Paul Millsap, 4 of 8. Again, another thing with Millsap, man. Millsap had two turnovers today. One was a foul. But Millsap has this thing about driving and transition. And we've been talking about this since the 2017-18 year. I have no idea why he still is allowed to bring the ball up the court and drive and transition. I have seen so many turnovers. So many turnovers from Paul Millsap when he takes the ball all the way down the court. And it's just frustrating. It's infuriating. Because as soon as he starts taking off, there's a 50% chance it's going to be a turnover or offensive foul like he had today. So there's a lot of stuff to be frustrated about. This is what I would say if you are watching this, if you are an actual Nuggets fan. And again, Phoenix is a good team, y'all. So if you're a Phoenix fan listening to this, this was never about Phoenix. Phoenix is a great team. They're healthy. You got everything that you need. I mean, I, I love Chris Paul, great player this year. Had him in my top five ballot for MVP. But it's just the way that the Nuggets are structured right now. And on top of that, they're so young, meaning young and also inexperienced. Faku ain't young, but he's inexperienced in the NBA playoffs. Austin Rivers is not experienced as a starting two guard for an elite team. And then without having Jamal there, like, and again, it's that big of a deal. Like, Jamal literally is the, he is the fire to the team. He's the attitude to the team. And he is just, Blue Arrow, whenever whenever there's a moment, he's he's there. It's never too big. And so him and Jokic together, that, that two-man pick and roll, the thing that changed, it changed the dynamic of the court. If you watch the Nuggets tonight, when Jokic was in the post, literally, man, Phoenix is just swarming. Hands everywhere because they already know y'all ain't finna hit no threes. We just ain't worried. The Michael Porter Jr., you know, he's a little hobble, but he is just, he's, He's just not there yet. He can't, he's barely, get, he doesn't get to the rack. He got to the rack in the fourth quarter. He doesn't take it to the rack. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff functionally that has to change. Now, far be it for me to look at Mike Malone, Michael Malone and all the adjustments that he's made and say, man, they're going to get it done next game. Far be it for me to look at Yoke and say, Yoke, they're going to get it done next game. I mean, it's been bad. It ain't been good. But here's the thing. I think what people were talking about on Twitter the Nuggets have so little margin for error against the Phoenix Suns because they're not healthy, and that's exactly the case. Man, if they had Jamal Murray and Will Barton starting in the, in the starting lineup the whole series, everything would be different, obviously, but it's not. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm excited for the next game. I think they ain't got no choice but to come out. And it sucks because, you know, especially with Yoke about to win the – just won the MVP, and he should be receiving it soon. Like, you know, you want, you want the Nuggets to play well. The Nuggets, like I said – Yoke had 24, 13, and 6. The rest of the Nuggets starters had 26, 11, and 4. So, yeah. Chris Walter. The series is fine, but it would have been so dope with Jamal Murray. Yeah, man. It's just one of those things. It's just one of those things, man. It's frustrating. I know y'all. Suns and four chants are going off. Yeah, you know. So. We'll see. We'll see. I think that this can be a great opportunity. I think this is really going to be some really good basketball in the next several games. I think we got a series. I think that there's a lot of confidence on the Phoenix Suns side, but here's the thing. When you have youthfulness that's inexperienced, it's hard when things get tight. When things get tight. And the other team is playing well. Momentum is carried over. It's hard to maintain that same level of confidence. But right now, they have no reason not to be confident because they've been playing so well and Denver's been playing so poorly. It's one thing if Denver – it's one thing if Phoenix is playing well and Denver's playing well. But it's another thing if they're playing well. And literally, you know, outside of Yoke, you ain't got nobody else putting up 20 points per game. Nobody. And tonight, Phoenix so – let's see here. So Jokic averaging over 20 points per game. No one, and no one else is close. Not even close. No one's even close. Whereas the Suns had Booker with 18, Paul with 17, Bridges with 16, Aiton with 15, Crowder with 11. And they had four players over 20 last game. And there's only one starter over double digits. So anyway, y'all, we going to see what it is. That's it for this episode. I'll see y'all soon.